In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the commandments in his hands, he did not know that the skin of his face had become radiant while he conversed with the Lord. When Aaron then and the other children of Israel saw Moses and noticed how radiant the skin of his face had become, they were afraid to come near him. Only after Moses called to them did Aaron and all the rulers of the community come back to him. Moses then spoke to them. Later on, all the children of Israel came up to him, and he enjoined on them all that the Lord had told him on Mount Sinai. When he finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses entered the presence of the Lord to converse with him, he removed the veil until he came out again. On coming out, he would tell the children of Israel all that had been commanded. Then the children of Israel would see that the skin of Moses' face was radiant. So he would again put the veil over his face until he went in to converse with the Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Holy is the Lord our God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests and Samuel among those who called upon his name, they called upon the Lord and he answered them, Holy is the Lord our God. From the pillar of cloud he spoke to them, they heard his decrees and the law he gave them. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. I call you my friends, says the Lord, for I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This glow that Moses has uh, when he has this encounter with God is meant to tell us that it speaks to the authenticity of his encounter with God, speaking to God that there's this glow that's left over, this lasting imprint of God's splendor. Now we can look at this passage in amazement, but St. Paul actually calls us In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he speaks about this very encounter, and he says, If the old covenant left glory on Moses' face, how much more glorious is the ministry of the Spirit now at work among us? It is at work in our church at large, and it's at work in each one of our lives. The gospel calls our attention to a specific way that the Spirit is at work in everyday life. That in everyday life, we will find these treasures, we will find these pearls of great price, that the Spirit will be at work, that there will be something different in different areas of our life. The Spirit at work will produce this glow that is in our life. And that is how we know it is from God, and those are the things we are to follow. We hear about this joy when we experience that joy that seems to kind of last. Maybe it's in a friendship or in an encounter that we have, and there's this joy that's there, this the presence of a spirit, the spirit of God in a specific way. Maybe it's in a ministry that we have been doing, and all of a sudden there's this lasting, you can't necessarily describe it, but there's something there. It brings meaning that is more than everything else. It's this great pearl, this treasure that we found. In reading scripture, there will be something that sticks out to us and stays with us. Maybe it brings a memory or it brings a hope of something. That the Spirit is at work, there's something palpable, we can't describe it. As we receive the Eucharist, there's this lasting impression of God that is upon us. Today, we are called to simply relish in God's glory that is among us, that works in the Spirit. May we continue to follow it so that we too may be filled with joy as we lay rest to other things to find that pearl of great price, that treasure in the field, and rejoice in it. Amen. rejoicing that our Father is at work among us through his Spirit. We offer him our prayers and petitions. For our priests and religious, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in their mission of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may the humility of Christ lead them in their governance of people. Let us pray to the Lord. For people plagued by fear, anxiety, or depression, may they know God's never-ending love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for our faith community. May the word of God transform us and empower us in service to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may God welcome them to the eternal joy of, he of his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the homeless, let us pray that God, working through us, would meet their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. And many of our families and our parish have been blessed this summer to have children, grandchildren come and visit. May God continue to bless those children and guide them in their ways. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Veronica Fuchs, who's the mother of uh, Father Gary, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. And we pause to offer the Lord those prayers and petitions which we each hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, allow our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to be attuned to your spirit at work in our midst. Allow us to find joy and find our pearl of great price and hold on to it. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.